Converting to militarism is going to be easier said than done in this playthrough, with particular thanks to my Ascension perk choices so far, but at least our consumer goods shortage is about to be dealt with. Hey there, Legion. It's Hadrian. Thank you for being here. Let's play some more Stellaris Federations in our Final Federation 2 series. So let's review some of the recent happenings over the last few episodes. We are still losing Federation experience, negative 1.82 to be precise, per month. And we are gaining cohesion at a rate of 0.2 per month. So eventually, we will have this in the positive and actually start gaining Federation experience. Right now, we're just a level one Federation. So that notification is going to be there for a while. We do have Relic activation available now. So if we were to activate either the Voltom Reality Perforator, which would give us temporary combat advantages, or we could activate the Blade of the Huntress to give our ships additional sublight speed. But this is giving us better planet sensor range by default, and also it's giving us, and this is giving us pop amenities usage, usage reductions. So that's quite handy. Let's also take a quick look. All right, so research-wise, we are four months away from UV lasers, nine months away from dense jungles being done, four months away from fusion missiles being done. And I did fix those cruisers. Right? Yes, I did. Although we don't have anything in our accessory slots yet, and that kind of needs to change. So for now, what we could do is plug in auxiliary fire controls, which improve chance to hit. Eventually, we'll have different systems plugged in, but we have the power for these at the moment and nothing else researched. So I would like to go ahead and have those done. Yeah, the reactor boosters are probably no longer needed on these ships, at least on our destroyers. We haven't had any major combat yet with combat yet with any neighboring empires. It's been a pretty friendly game so far, but I, this is just me being very, very cautious. You can see that removing the boosters is definitely changing the power situation on these ships. So we'll have to make sure that we continually research the best power. To the commenter who pointed out that the uh, Enigmatic Fortress is currently bugged, I appreciate that. I don't know if that will play out in our game or if they'll fix it by the time we get to it. You never know, because um, hotfixes do come out pretty regularly for Paradox games. But we'll, we'll keep an eye on it, and I appreciate you telling me. So there's that. We also have a migration treaty that was proposed. That's less relevant. The Rock Rock High Kingdom has declared the Neverite League their rival. Okay, and the it looks like that was mutually done. And Admiral Anushri Sharma has also leveled up, which is quite nice. So, having gone over that, let's take a look at our faction situation as we begin, because I was also mentioning that it's going to be a while before we can get militaris in charge of the Unified Solar Republic. But I realized that one of the things that I could do, I'm currently suppressing, let's really talk about this for a moment because this is helpful not only for new players to further understand the mechanics, but I'm learning this as we go. Reading some of the comments has been really helpful with this as well. But basically what I want to point out here is, let me begin by going to my Ascension perk so that you can see this. We are gaining an additional 50% governing ethics attraction. So our governing ethics are egalitarian, xenophile, and pacifist. There's a certain proportion of attraction for all of those, and all of those are 50% more attractive to our population. But there's also a certain portion of the population that is following other ethics. And we're currently suppressing, as I recall, which one? The Alien Aid Initiative? Yes, we're currently suppressing the xenophilic faction. These are the xenophiles. I'm going to stop suppressing them. And the reason I'm going to stop suppressing them is that the one of the best ways that I can get my militarism up is by suppressing factions that are not being boosted by my government ethics and given that one vision ascension perk. So what we're instead going to suppress is materialist. We do have a materialist faction. That's the Council of High Technology. We're going to suppress them. And we are also still promoting... Let's see. The... Where are you? 
we're still promoting Operation Warcry. So what that's going to do, we're going to suppress them, and then we're going to suppress any other... Let's see, there are some militaries already, so I don't think... Yeah, there's not a whole lot we can do in this regard. But I want to take away any pops that are following... Yeah, 14% of our pops currently follow materialist ethics. So we can free up 14% of our population. It would seem like it's just 2%, but that is the predicted amount that it will eventually reach to. By suppressing these, we're going to free up pops to join the other categories. And we'll suppress the largest category when it's time to do so. There are some other possibilities that we can pursue. But for now, let's go up to speed 2 and keep doing our best to make that switch. It's not always what I do when I'm playing as the Unified Solar Republic, but this is my third series using this particular empire on the channel. Our ah, resolution's been passed. Which did we pass? Pangalactic Recycling Initiatives. So... Diplomatic weight from the economy has been reduced. Pop consumer goods upkeep has been reduced. That'll actually help with my shortage. And then we... It looks like... Blocker clear time will be increased as a result of that. Interestingly enough. Now, I really need to build some additional alloy. I guess I need to get some additional alloy production going. I've been focused on resolving the consumer goods shortage, and I need to resolve it. But we've got a lot of food right now. Hang on. Speaking of factions, let's look one more time at our faction situation. Stay on speed 2 for now. Construction completed. Knowledge is the key to the universe. Right, so the pacifists still want solid liquidity. Construction completed. We just finished a few technology projects. So we are done with the UV laser. We can research the X-ray laser. We can get more energy credits from technicians, which is probably a good thing. Or a better point defense, better reactor booster. I'm going to go ahead and say, let's go for the energy credits from technicians boost. And then what do we finish researching here? Fusion missiles. Oh, good. Okay, so all of our missile platforms can be improved. Okay, this is the upgrade for civilian fabricators, which I think it's time we went ahead and did this. Because this would help us resolve our consumer goods shortage quickly and efficiently. We would need rare crystals to support it but we have enough to upgrade at least a few of them. So we're gonna do that. Now it looks like the Inigor station is ready for some upgrades. Is there any, anywhere else that needs it first? Probably so. Well, maybe not. Let's go ahead and say gun battery and then a hangar bay there. And then we can do a listening post. Yeah, that seems like a good idea. One thing I haven't done is build too many of my defense platforms yet. I'm a little bit anxious about that. We'll have to see how it plays out. Construction completed. The main issue that I'm trying to resolve is the consumer goods shortage, but then I would also like to get alloy production up because we're not building our new ships fast enough. We've had cruisers designed for a few episodes now, but we haven't actually been able to build them because we're not producing alloys fast enough. I will give the order to upgrade one of the fleets, which will eat up all of my alloys for the moment. You can see that upgrade progressing pretty nicely. The Tomador Free Traders have made peace with the Neborite League. Okay. Research concluded. Good. All right, so that tile blocker has been researched. We can now go for... Ooh, more naval capacity is probably the way to go here because we're about to hit that. We are about to hit our naval capacity, so let's, let's avoid any... Let's avoid any problems that might pop up. All right, so these upgrades are still happening. I could buy some alloys to make this happen. Well, maybe not, because we're about to have to spend... <laughs> Ugh, man. This game so far. Yes, we'd like to extend our deal. I want that research bonus, but now I don't have any money with which to buy alloys. I was going to buy things. 
dang it. We don't have solid liquidity either, so we don't have the best influence gain. But since we're not expanding anymore, we're still in good shape. We can still use our influence for cool things. One way we may be able to get more militarists is to promote someone, is to support someone in an Ship election upgrades applied. that is militarist. We can consume influence to do that. That's really what the purpose of the influence resource is. Yes, you use it to expand, but once you're done expanding, it builds up over time based on all the kind of political moves that you're making. And as a result, you can influence different things in terms of the politics and the factions and the ethics as we are trying to do. It's pretty cool. All right, now let's give the order for this fleet to upgrade. Looks like they're gonna upgrade at Hades. So they're across the Miric system right now. Do you have, yeah, I need to upgrade this one too because these guys are sitting at Izar as their home base, but it doesn't actually have crew quarters. And without crew quarters, there's no reduction on the there's no reduction on the maintenance costs of that particular fleet, which is kind of problematic. Research concluded. Let me take a quick look at my ships and make sure we've done everything here. All right, civilian fabricators have been researched. That's good news. We can upgrade city district housing. We can unlock synthetic crystal plants. Ooh, that probably needs to happen. Although the railgun probably needs to happen first. Let's get the railgun underway so we can have higher level weaponry. And now that that upgrade is ready, yeah, this will fix our problem. And it'll do it pretty quickly. We can only do this a couple of times, though, because we don't have a ton of rare crystals. Matter of fact, I'm just going to upgrade one for now, because we have such a small surplus relative to... I mean, look at our exotic gases. We have 19 extra exotic gases. We have three rare crystals. Envoy Arjun Nambudiri has died at the age of 81. Of course, the new envoy will immediately take his place. I guess that's the way the system currently works. These are our envoys. Alexander Larionov, Karim Kudzi, and Petrus Steljold. We will eventually get more envoys to mess around with. For now, that's what we've got. Let's see. Diplomatic grants. Yeah, we are using terraforming gases because we have this world terraforming up. Any other worlds worth terraforming? We have these. We have this world here, that, and this could be a rock rock colony. Once we had the alloys for it, there's some there's some dust on that particular planet. So I'm I'm looking forward to that. All right, New Roanoke. We can go ahead and upgrade the planetary administration here, and then it seems like, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and go for alloy foundries on New Roanoke because we desperately need more alloy production. If you can't tell, I'm a little bit nervous. We've had Research almost a hundred years of peace. Nothing too serious going on. I don't want to find myself in a bad position. Okay, we can increase our artisan output, which is great news. That's going to help with the consumer goods shortage as well. Is there something more important than that, though, that I should do? Like better shields or advanced combat rules? Yeah, let's go ahead and increase artisan output by 10%. It's going to take only 28 months. It's not a particularly long project, which is good. We're going to stay on speed two. It looks like you guys are going to Tarek. Yeah, we're still going to build that uh, exotic gas refinery. And I guess I can send... Do I have any construction ships? No, I don't. Raxicodium Concern. Following a long period of growing support for the True Democracy Alliance, the Raxicodium Concern has finally embraced the faction, adopting their core values and policies. As a result of bringing this faction into their government, they have become more outwardly egalitarian. Okay. Let's pause for a moment and see how our factions are doing. All right, so far, suppressing the materialists is not doing too much. Militarists are still on the decline at, at the moment because we're not suppressing xenophilia anymore. But what I want to do is try and get rid of those 14% of the pops that are following it because those will distribute to other ethics. That's what I would like to do. We, may, we might change up that strategy in an episode or two if we find it's not working for us. It seems like these upgrades are almost done. 
Ship upgrades applied. Now that does mean that I will be able to... No, I need 500, not 200. Yeah, I need 500 alloys. Now I think what I can do here... I'm going to go ahead and say that I want to build a hyperlane registrar because that'll improve the collection range. And we'll also build more trade hubs. We're just going to let this base be just an outright trade base. Even though it could also technically be used as a defensive base, we're going to go with trade for now. Ooh, Atlantis is also ready for some additional love. We are definitely going to do exactly what you think we're going to do. Let's go ahead. Where are you? Alloy foundries. Perfect. We'll have to keep an eye on mineral output, but I think we'll be okay. Especially because what I can do here is go ahead and build another mining district on Concord. Consumer goods shortage is mostly dealt with, as promised at the beginning of this episode. Senate is now in session. We are voting on the Military Readiness Act, which means diplomatic weight from fleet power would be increased by 40%. Naval capacity increased by 20 across the board. Ship upkeep would also be increased. Let's go ahead and support that. Let's say that we're in favor of that. We're going to go towards militarist policies. That, that doesn't actually have an effect on our population in terms of ethical alignment, but we'll get there. We will get there. I'll leave you there for now. Governor Daphne Devereaux has died at the age of 69. Oh, that's a shame. Let's go ahead and upgrade the Cider Revitalization Center on Elysium. This is our Gaia planet. And yeah, we can have Danielle Rizzo, who's 31 and provides additional administrative capacity from bureaucrats. Not the best governor bonus, but that is not a, um, it's a one planet sector at the moment and it's likely to remain a one planet sector. We can populate this desert world. This is the one with dust on it, and that will make it construction completed. A larger sector, but for now, we keep it as is. All right. Once again, we're going to do more alloy foundries. And I do need to buy a little bit more. Let's go ahead and upgrade that as well. Are there any others of those that I haven't upgraded yet? I bet there are. Construction completed. Yeah, so we need planetary administration. But it looks like most of them are upgraded. Okay, governor's gained a trait. Ah, oh, Wei Tan is a substance abuser. Again, governors seem to be getting those negative traits a lot. It's a shame. All right, we're up to 221 influence. Just going to let that build for now. There are things that I can do edict-wise with that. Like land of opportunity, encourage political thought, ethic shift chance. Hmm. So we could do this. This is one thing we could do. Make it more likely that people will spread out into militarism. Let's hold off on that for now, though, because I have... I think what I would like to try and do is get a militarist leader in charge and see how that does first. The NASA authority has declared the, has declared the number right league their rival... That's not a good sign. Okay, so it looks like the Rock Park High Kingdom wishes to declare war against the Neborite League. And you are... Now, interestingly enough, that means that we would have... Yeah, so that, that would put us at odds with the Lock and Mechanist and the Interstellar Scanner Union. Interesting. So the Rock Rock are getting, getting a little bit antsy. They want to try and take, I would imagine, that system. And they want to conquer the Neborite League. But this would mean that we would have to defend down here. Oh man, this is a decision if I've ever seen one. We need a unanimous vote so we can say no and they will not do it. Are we ready for a war yet? I don't think we're ready for a war yet. I'm going to say no. Just based on the fact that we're not quite ready to support them in a war. I don't want to have the lock and mechanists wreck me down here while I'm still building up these colonies. We're not quite ready. 
To whatever extent I can exercise control over that, I'm going to keep fighting Research at bay. Research concluded. Okay, so rail guns are done. I knew that's what that was. Habitats need to be researched pretty soon because we are going to be playing pretty tall this series, given that we're so locked in. Question is, do I need anything else first? Like Plasma Thruster. Plasma Thruster could be good to have first. Durasteel Armor could also be good. Exotic Gas Refineries, maybe. And we don't need that yet. We've, we've got a lot of exotic gases, so that's one that we don't need to be as crazy about pursuing. We also could go the robotic worker route if we want our economy to grow. This would help with playing tall. It really would. I'm going to go ahead and do it. Since we're playing tall, it's a cheaper technology. We've been sitting on it for a while. It's only going to take 12 months, and it could lead to some interesting story outcomes, but we need additional economic help. And having robots that can move around and support the Unified Solar Republic is probably a good thing. Governor Waitan has died at the age of 91. All right, so this is our Earth governor. I'm going to move Navia Nambudiri, who's governing the Olympia sector, very small sector. She has a research base, or research boost bonus. I'm going to move her. And then we have... Now, remind me, the Olympia sector is here. Oh, perfect. Yeah, this is where we're building some of our ships. So the Olympia sector... Yep, we absolutely want Soda Takahashi to be our governor here, because... That shipyard is there. There's, I have a lot of uncollected trade value too, which is starting to bother me. We're almost up to 500 alloys, which I want to use to upgrade probably the Izar station. I'm not too worried about the NASA authority. I have, we're friendly with them right now. Who are they? Yeah, I'm a little bit surprised we're not in a better relationship with them. They're rivaling the Lock and Mechanists, the Rock Rock Kingdom, and the Neborite League. Okay, that that rivalry means we don't have to worry about them attacking. Like, we don't have to worry about them banding together with these guys. So they're unified against these guys with us. They're currently belligerent, whereas we're cooperative. Yeah, let's go back up to speed two. I, I'm not too worried about them. I just want to keep an eye on them. All right. As much as I would like to upgrade my ships, I am saving my alloys for the time being. One of the alloy foundries is about to go up. And we will see the difference that that makes in about 15 days. Love this track so, so, so much. Not bad. We now have a mineral shortage, though. Not for long. We do have... Actually, no. Our mineral... Shortage really is that current level. Tell you what, one thing I want to change. Let's go ahead and say, now that our consumer shortage, consumer good shortage is gone, we're going to remove this. So we have a little bit more energy income per month. We set that up earlier in the series. It's just not needed anymore. Esteemed Chancellor Jean Dupont, a decade ago, the Unified Solar Republic pledged to support the Artisan Troop. Yeah, of course. Crap. All right, I'm going to go ahead and say sell 500. It's a deal. I really hate to keep selling stuff en masse like that. I would prefer that things pile up a little bit more. All right, so I can absolutely upgrade this to a star hold, which we're going to do. So that we can have more buildings there. Anchor is ready for its first mining district, which we are going to build. We need to. And now that we've spent those resources, I can go ahead and give the order to start upgrading some more ships. It is nice to see the alloy income a little bit higher now. Any increase Construction completed. is good. As far as Research those are concerned. Concluded. All right, naval capacity plus 30. Let's pause and consider some new choices. Leader upkeep minus 10%. Civic, civic slots plus 1. Huh. I wonder if that could help with militarism. Crime minus 15%, amenities plus 5%, habitability plus 5%. That would help with just general productivity. Let's, um... Hmm. Hmm. 
I'm going to go ahead and research interstellar campaigns. Because if we're going to go the militarist route, I want to have some things that will help in war already kind of down as a foundation, if that makes sense. I want to have those things ready. Completed. Okay, now it seems like you're helping out in Seoul, you're helping out in Alpha Centauri. Where else can I put... Yeah, Avalon is an Alpha Centauri. I don't have many worlds that are producing a lot of research. So I guess I'll just leave the science ship be for now. There's nothing that I can really do with it. Did I research wormhole travel already? I did, didn't I? Let's have a look. Maybe I didn't. No, I didn't. Unless it's in another category. No, it's in the physics category. Okay. So we haven't researched that just yet. I'll have to uh, be mindful of that for sure. I'm annoyed by that mineral shortage. Should be able to resolve that before long. Yes, I know. Minerals are going to be gone in 12 months. Don't tell me. Especially because we're, we have more alloy foundries about to finish up. So that's going to increase... Hey, more alloy production is good, so I'll take it. Ship upgrades applied. Good. I'm going to give the order for the other ships to upgrade. It'll take a while. We're, we still haven't built any cruisers. Knowledge is the key to the universe. Okay, we now have access to robot workers. And minerals from miners plus 20%. Yeah, we're probably going to do that. Destroy hope points. Yeah, absolutely going to just upgrade our minerals from miners. That should help with things. Now you, Avalon, I already built an additional housing district. Or at least I think I did. Maybe, no, I didn't build luxury housing. I could build a, there's a couple different ways I could solve this particular issue with housing. I could go ahead and build another mining district since this is a mining world, which is probably the best thing to do. Let me go ahead and do that. Yeah, I've definitely got some additional upgrades that I can purchase. Yeah, these guys are con converting consumer goods into admin cap. So I don't need to do anything more there. I think primarily what I want to do... Yeah, let's go ahead and just upgrade that research complex. All right. Let's see. We're about ready to be done with this episode, I think. Looks like we do have a few more blockers to clear here, so I'll go ahead and give those orders. Yes, we have one to clear on Atlantis as well. None left on Earth. Still haven't gotten in the habit of going through my planets this way. Need, Knowledge is the key need to get on to that. Universe. Okay, so let's pause for a moment. Artisan output has been, been improved by 10%, so that's going to be good for my consumer goods as well. Advanced research complexes... Subspace sensors and black hole observatory. That probably is the next tech that I need to go for. Let's go ahead and select that. And I'm going to stop this episode here. In the next one, we are going to continue to get our alloy production up as high as we can. We're going to try to resolve the mineral shortage and just get our economy on track to stay in a surplus. I just, I, I'm increasingly nervous as this series continues to go by about conflict with neighboring empires. The NASA authority, I don't think will be a problem. They don't appear to be... They're in a defensive pact, it appears, with the Tumbador Free Traders. That could be bad. Because the Rock Rock are kind of militant, and if they decided to attack in that direction, then that means the NASA Authority would get pulled into the war. Hmm. Hadn't thought about that. We'll have to think about that next episode, among other things. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this one, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to follow along. New episodes are coming out every day at 4 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. Comments are always welcome. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time.